And we are live. Hey, it's Vampire Logan here. Uh, we're just going to play some D&D &D today. Uh, has been another long time between sessions for Wild Beyond the Witchlight. Uh, so I think um, we're back to two players and uh, we're going to re... We're going to retcon a little bit of the story um, to kind of fix the addition of new players last time. And uh, so basically what we're going to do is just uh, um, narrate out what happened last time uh, as if those uh, other PCs weren't there. They kind of just popped in. Um, so uh, how about we just say they they popped in and also popped out again? <laughs> so they came in helped you do some stuff and then they sort of disappeared and you're not really sure if they were real or if they were just figments of your imagination or some strange fairy magic. We don't know. Uh, so then we will start um, with a little recap of what happened last time. So previous to that, you guys had gone through a bunch of the uh, um, uh, rides and stuff and investigated them, uh, found the Kenku, uh, who was messing with things, uh, you kind of befriended them, or at least got them to stop doing that, mo mostly. Um, Mimsy had come along and met you. Uh, you guys knew each other from your past. Um, and then you joined up. Uh, Bobby McSwagger just left with his family. Um, and then these new people came along. Uh, they popped out of objects when you guys were in the Lost and Found with the... Uh, um, Displacer Beast, and so maybe they were magical constructs, who knows, but they have now disappeared. Uh, you guys spent a little bit of time investigating the Hall of Mirrors and didn't find anything uh, that you didn't already know before, so you uh, found a mirror, though, that where you had seen the halfling uh, kind of staring into and almost get pulled in by the pig mask girl, and... Um, then uh, I'm not even sure what happened after that. Then I think you went on to another one of the rides. Did you go on the dragonfly rides, maybe? Yeah, we did do those. Yeah, I think you did that, and then you flew around the um, uh, the whole uh, um, kind of area around the um, uh, the grounds of the carnival, and then oh yeah, and there was another incident of the uh, Kenku trying to mess with that ride as well but you ended up saving the dwarf who was falling and any other things you went on i think that was it and then then we were going to go to the big top but we just paused there because we were like yeah it would be a good spot to stop for next yeah. session okay so maybe we'll just um continue on uh there there are um let me just see if there's anything else you want to do before we go. This time is relative here. Um, there's like there's like nothing else that we can really do to get any kind of hints about the um displacer beast kid, right? Because yeah, I think that was the only thing we were that, worried about. That search and you figure that like the little displacer he's probably went into that mirror. So that's really all you need to know for the plot. Mm. Um, if you wanted to do any more exploring of, of any of the rides or any backstory stuff, there is a few more rides oh, that you could do. We were, the carousel was where we, we were trying to figure out the names, but we couldn't get yeah, all we of them. Were. Yeah, that's where that's where the icons are. Oh yeah, yeah. Even you are. guys were doing the uh, carousels. Yeah, I think you were down to just the last few names. Let's just scroll up in the yeah. Discord. I think we had. Done I think someone there. put them down. I did. If I find them, I should be in our chat. Okay. Bold moss and pride. That's right. There was a. Uh... Yeah, there was a stitch. 
it's like underscore in and then or yeah we were at the Dulcerides and we were talking to the centaur and she was saying stuff about giving us a um pail of paint of gold paint to write back their names stitch oh so yeah yeah it was stitch space space and space yeah and we couldn't figure that one out and uh, let's just look at that uh, the hints for that one So yeah, just for any of the um, viewers, so they were in a uh, carousel. The carousel had a bunch of um, uh, horses and unicorns, mm -hmm. and the they came in pairs mm -hmm. of um, uh, in in pairs of two <laughs> pairs of two in pairs of uh, horses or unicorns, and they were they had names on them, but they were scratched out, and it and the centaur. Um, that ran the ride couldn't, for some reason, couldn't tell you exactly what was going on. Every time she tried to do so, she got kind of ill. And so there's some kind of weird thing going on there. Uh, let's see if I can find that. The centaur said she was cursed too, besides from that. Yeah. Hmm. There we go. That's a carousel. Oh yeah, her name is Diana Cloppington. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you know she was in good humor, but there's a sadness behind her eyes. And, uh, And she also made a point to say that she's not a centaur. She's a human who made a bad deal. The curse. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any way I could oh, do yeah, like, a, she... like an investigate check about the second name? Hang on a sec. Um... So yeah, the the last two are um, unicorns, and then the uh, mm -hmm. the um, the the one you couldn't read was a uh, uh, yeah space space and space, and I think you had gotten the other ones right. Yeah, they're both. Yeah, we've got all of them. Because so, we had yeah. like two more. Right. Yeah. The yeah. the first pair was fortune and bold, which I think you got, and then the other one is the one you could read was fall. And did you get the other one? Moss or something. Was that it? Was that the one? Because there was bold moss and pride. Those are the ones that we um guessed and got right. Yeah. So um, pride and fall go together, and so pride was the one for that one. And then the other one is um, stone and moss. And uh, if you guys make, I'll let you make, and then um, investigation or um, intuition to see if you kind of know this pattern. Investigation. Whichever uh, one is better. Because what is you. intuition? Intuition is uh, a wisdom-based one. Uh, I have plus four. Wait, no. Wait, what was again? I looked at the wrong one. I only have a so, plus two on wisdom. Sorry, insight. Insight is the one I'm thinking of. I have plus insight. one. Insight? Yeah, so investigation or uh, insight. Investigation, I have a plus three. Yeah, so roll that one for you. Have a, Don't so. do investigation on me. I'm negative one. You have a you have a plus three on inside if you want to roll that. Yeah, so roll it, roll the best one. Oh, well, I got a seven investigation. Okay, you don't gleam very much. That was much. awful. <laughs> Digital dice are bullying me. 
if you at least get a 10, I'll give you one piece of information. If you get a 15, I'll give you two. And if, and, uh, for a 20, I'll give you 20 or more. I'll give you three mm -hmm. pieces. Are you, uh, are you rolling? Did you get in D and D beyond or do you need me to oh, roll it for you? Yeah, let me... oh, you want me to roll, uh, for insight? Insight. Yeah. Okay. Cause you have a plus three. Are you rolling on D&D? I beyond? got a teen. How much? 18. 18. Great. So because get... I got a 17 and I have a plus one, so 18. Okay, so um, you so get from the first one. Um, uh, well, first of all, I'll just ask you, what do, why do you think fortune and bold are related? Because if you can figure that out on your own, then I'll give you a different one. Oh. Well, all the other ones are like it's like word association, but one was stone and moss, which I kind of understand because yeah. it makes me think of stony moss. And then pride and fall is a little obvious. Someone prideful takes a bad fall. Yeah. Okay. So I'll say that you guys already know this one. There's an expression. It's like a proverb that pride goes before a fall. Yeah. And so. The other two are also kind of proverbs, and they go, uh, fortune favors the bold, pride mm -hmm. goes before a fall, and a rolling stone gathers no moss. And so for the fourth one, it's probably also going to be from some kind of proverb. So it's stitch. Do you know any proverbs that relate to stitches? Snitches get stitches. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you say there was like a few letters on the other horse at least that they had? Yeah, so you got space, space, and N space. So it's a four letter word with the third letter being N. So yeah. like, like fine? No, it's not right. That's close. Is it fine with a D? No, um, I will give you a little more of a hint on the, uh, on the proverb. So the, it's a stitch in time. And then there's two more words to it. One of which is the other word. So a stitch in time, something, something. I need I know that, but like, I can't think of it. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll tell you I'll, since you I'll already guessed you like already some of the other nine? letters. Nine. Yes. Nine. You got it. It's a stitch in time saves nine. Oh. I've heard that like maybe three times from like three different <laughs> movies, but like. I mean, it's kind of funny that these are like old. Um. English proverbs, so like not everybody think about it. That's why I went silent. Would be for a even second. be familiar with them, but even a, in a D and D world, would they even know of those proverbs? I don't know. I have no, no idea. They probably, they probably have like their own twist on it. Yeah. Like, They'll like what is D and D version? for? Snitches get stitches. Snitches get <laughs> stitches. <laughs> It'll be like their own version of slang. Yeah. <laughs> Especially since this world has uh, magic and so on. Um, so anyway, once you say, uh, once you say that once out loud, that. Um, paint. oh, and you can, you need to paint the name onto the uh, unicorn. And if all the unicorn's names are correct, each one telepathically shares with its rider three secrets about the prismere or the hourglass. Okay. Okay, so while you once you um paint that last one on and then you ride the carousel again, um the the unicorns actually telepathically communicate with you. And so they 
kind of give you, it's not really a direct like language kind of telepathic connection, but okay. they sort of give you the feeling that you can gain three pieces of knowledge from them relating to um. the um, things about the, the uh, carnival. Would they, well, no, they probably wouldn't know anything about the kid. Would they know, like, like stuff that, that people normally don't know about the carnival? Like, what's going on with the mirrors? Or, because I don't want to, like, waste a piece of information if they're not going to know. When you think of stuff the, like that. when you think that to the, to the unicorn, it says, um, that mirror is a, or you get the feeling you, you don't really get a, a, like a sentence or, a, or dialogue, but you get the feeling of traveling through that mirror and entering the realm of Prismir. Um, you get the feeling that, uh, the former ruler of that Fey realm is frozen in time. Oh. Uh, and then you also get the feeling that uh, three hags have seized control of this domain and split it between them. Together they are known as the Hourglass Coven. And okay. then finally you get the names of the three hags. Bavlorna, Blightstraw. I'll type Straw. these in the chat okay. for you after. Okay. Um, Scabatha, Nightshade. And Endolin Moongrave. And when you hear okay. the um when you hear one of them, I can't remember which one it is, I think it's Bav Lorna, you're reminded of that um that statue that was laughing at um at uh the the halfling's proposal. Yeah. For some reason. Okay. And then um, the names of the splinter realms that they that they control are called Hither, Thither, and Yawn. Interesting. And one more piece of information about the coven. They are riddled with distrust because they are evil creatures, and each hag is convinced that the other two are plotting against each of them. So they are not exactly friendly with each other. So much being a coven together. Yeah. They are, but it's not like a... Because they're all evil, they always a think friendly that... friendly thing. That, that... Constantly like, drawing knives on each other in the shadows. Just... Yeah. Very just stressful. Did you, did you try to poison my stew, Bethany? <laughs> <laughs> they're frenemies. I <laughs> tried to poison me earlier. Frenemy oh hands. my god, your hair is so cute! I fucking hate that bitch. <laughs> That's why you left you. All right, so now That's you... why your mother's a whore. <laughs> just the rudest old ladies. <laughs> okay, so that was... Was that like three full pieces of information just on that subject? Yep. So the okay. first the first piece was the that um the former owner or former ruler of Prismir is frozen in time the three hags have seized control and you get their names and then that they are um distrustful of each other. Okay, so I'll just copy and paste their names. Turn them against here. each other and get what we want. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we got to make this I'm going to start working on my deception because of, if I ever have to stab one in the back, I'm going to tell her that it was the other one that did Actually, it. I might as well just cut and paste this whole... Exactly. Work on your section stuff. of knowledge here. Steal from them and blame the All other. Right. I only have a plus two on deception and my charisma is <laughs> not good. Info received from the carousel.
Okay, so I put that in the Discord chat so you guys can have that to remember for next time. Or for this right. time, even. <laughs> okay, and I think that was the last thing uh, you were going to do before. Oh, uh, one thing else you find out, and this one they give you for free, is that the they tell you that the poor Diana um, Cloppington is a cursed human who made a deal with the Hourglass Coven, these same hags, and they um, Diana asked for to be reunited with her beloved horse and the hags twisted oh. that wish and merged them together into one creature. So she is actually merged with her beloved horse. So what happened to her horse's mind? Does she have two minds now? One like a horse and one like hers? Uh, that they do not know. <laughs> That's what I'm curious <laughs> about, because technically she stole the horse's head and replaces her <laughs> torso and above yep. with her head, the horse's head. So where's the horse's mind? Gone? Is oh, it dead God. now? Cal Calypso's Some things are best not pondered. Is... <laughs> I can't help it. Calypso's thought process is just, so if if I cut it in half, will that solve the problem? No, you no. kill both. <laughs> well, they would she both be, be dead, but that, technically that does solve the problem. Exactly. <laughs> it would, but they would both be dead, and then they can't complain about well, that it. That sounds still, like a personal no problem. That word should complain about it. Where's his head at? Nowhere. <laughs> It's probably mounted on the witch coven's wall. That's probably where the head is. That's in the bed of the first scene of the Godfather movie. Yeah, yeah. That's where it is. That's where it came from. Yeah. <laughs> Still gonna question it though. Yes. I mean, they do not know. She can't be worried about it if she's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Could be difficult though. That is quite a quite a blow you would need to strike. <laughs> She's only like twice my size. I could take her. Don't get behind her. Trust me. I've learned my lesson. Uh, you think I've never been kicked by a horse before? Oh yeah. <laughs> Not step behind the horse. <laughs> Maybe she's easily spooked. Find a snake. All right. All right. Well, if we're all done here, then we should probably go to the big top now because there's. I'm supposed to go get a crown. I mean, we have to go get a crown because uh, I'm the best. I mean, we're the best in the carnival. <laughs> okay. We will jump to the big top <laughs> final scene here. Okay, so the final hour has approached, and uh, most of the carnival stars have a uh, part to play in the coronation, which is a celebration of joyous zeal, um, and it plays out as follows. So, um, going to mute you for a sec because I'm getting echo there. Or if you can just mute just yours. Let me go. Um, I think I can fix that. Okay, that's is that you, Rogue, or is that... I think it's probably me, but I, I turned my echo cancellation on. Hmm. It seems better now. Okay. okay. So... Uh, <clears throat> so here's how it proceeds. So, uh, you guys are there. Um, it hasn't really been decided that you are there, but they make sure that you sit up front and center. Um, as everyone takes their seats in the big top, uh, 
Durlagron is the name of the Displacer Beast. He escorts Mr. Witch from his wagon to the coronation. Um, and you guys notice that Thacko the Clown is there guarding the staff area as they come out from the back of that area. Uh, Mr. Witch and uh, Durlagron stand on the sidelines next to Candlefoot as Mr. Light gives an opening speech. And um, I don't know if I've shown you the picture of Mr. Light. I'll just grab his image right now. Or do I have one? Maybe I don't have a picture. I thought there was a picture of him. Oh, probably in the NPCs. I think we saw one. I could have remembered seeing both of them. <clears throat> so this, this is how he's dressed right now. Kind of like a jester. And uh, he has his uh, witch light vein with him. And uh, so it's kind of like a weather vein or like a wand. And let's see what story we want to pick. So he. Uh, Gives an opening speech uh, and talking about how the monarch is selected um, as the person who has most contributed to the happiness of the people in the carnival. Um, they go on for a little while with some, you know, a bunch of show and like flashy uh, special effects and stuff like that. And and talking about uh, how wonderful it is that so much joy has been spread today. Uh, blah 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 and then he uh, Candlefoot holds a hat box uh, containing the monarch's crown at the end of his speech Mr. Witch removes the crown of golden butterflies from the hat box and um, comes over to uh, Calypso and and Carlton and he pulls the crown out and the butterflies kind of um, uh, shimmer around it. And uh, he holds up his wand and um, just sort of lets it loosely uh, um, dangle in his uh, between his two fingers or his forefinger and his thumb. And it magically um, kind of orients itself pointing towards the two of you. And he goes to put the crown on... Um, Mimsy's head, but then suddenly it it um, gets pulled kind of beyond his control over to uh, Calypso, and he places the crown on Calypso's head, <laughs> and uh, the he knights you kind of like with his wand on on each shoulder, and he says, "You are now the." Uh, witch like monarch and happy clowns shower all um uh all of you in glitter so throwing piles of glitter all over the the three of you uh mr witch or mr light included she um, sneezes <laughs> and then uh palisha the mermaid who who you had uh um saved uh her well basically candlefoot uh Sings a beautiful, joyous song as pixies flutter all around her, and Mr. Witch and Mr. Light escort you um, and Minzy on a circuit of the stage uh, and and kind of puts you onto a, kind of a big velvet carpet, a red carpet, leading up to a throne. They let you sit down on the throne. And then... Um, uh, when Palasha's song uh, concludes, 
uh, Mr. Light leads you on a parade through the carnival where um, uh, uh, Burly the bugbear is actually picks up your, your um, throne with you on it and kind of carries you around <laughs> while setting off fireworks um, from the back of it. That's funny. And uh, uh, Der Legrand, the, the displacer beast, um, sort of gives you a little salute with his tentacle. <laughs> and then uh, yes. he escorts Mr. Witch back to his wagon. And uh, so now you're kind of just weaving your way all the way through the car carnival uh, in sort of the figure eight kind of layout. And all the people in the carnival and everybody in the big top is kind of following in like this big procession and everybody that's still out in the carnival is like turns and waves at you and cheers uh much to your extreme embarrassment <laughs> 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 just, you're not used to this much attention and uh, uh she's like conflicted like she kind of likes it but at the same time she wants to stab everyone that's <laughs> looking at her right now <laughs> So some There's people will be like looking at you and they get like a dirty look. They're like, ooh. And then <laughs> sort of some of the rain clouds appear and you go like, okay, okay. And you smile for a little bit as the, uh, the carnival of the, the mood of the carnival kind of fluctuates based on your mood even more so now. <laughs> and and um, so... Da -da -da -da. At the end of the celebration, as the carnival begins to wind down, uh, the ceremonial crown that you're wearing that whole time, uh, there's also like partying, people are like handing you drinks and stuff, and and uh, everybody's, you know, they're not alcohol drinks, just like the fizzy drinks that you can get from the carnival. Yeah. And uh, at the end of the, the presentation, the ceremonial crown teleports back into the hat box. Candlefoot returns the hat box to the staff area. Uh, you, so you've made your way all the way around um, the whole uh, wish like carnival and back into the big top. And um, he hands off the hat box to Thacko the clown, who stashes it in a wagon, in in the wagon that you'd previously been in with Mister Witch, Mister Light. Um, do, 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 do. So um, for being the Witchlight Monarch, you get a couple of benefits. Um, so uh, you know how you were wearing those butterfly wings um, that were made of yeah. paper? Uh, you have so, actually, yeah, the ones that are by, by the time you get back, in my jacket. what's that? The ones that I stuffed in my jacket and refused to wear. Yeah, well, now those have disappeared and real butterfly wings have sprouted out of your back through your jacket such that you cannot hide them. <laughs> but as long as you have these wings, you gain a flying speed equal to your walking speed and you gain a plus five bonus to all charisma based ability checks. Um, and you just know that the... I need that. What's that? I need that. Yeah. Uh, these effects will last for an hour. Um, after the first appearance of those wings, you have three more uses of it, and then they will vanish. So you can activate them uh, at any time, to, and they'll last for an hour. And then the, after the third time you activate it, it will disappear. Okay. So um, as they appear, you're in the big top. Uh, did you want to like fly around and try them out? Um, this is sort of a free she, activation. Uh, I don't know. She kind of just does. She's like looking at them every two seconds and trying to figure out how much it would hurt if she tried to cut them off or not. <laughs> <laughs> and then you somehow feel like you don't want to do that. <laughs> Yeah, I'm She's pretty sure like, I don't know. Them. I kind of want to do it. Is I'm just saying, <laughs> they're part of you now. You kind of don't want to. Yeah. She's kind of more like focused on figuring out what's going on, and she knows that she still has this pocket watch. And being so pa paranoid, we'll just call it paranoid because that's what she is. Being so paranoid, she wants to find out 
like what exactly she needs to do with this because she knows she's supposed to use it as leverage but she also knows that witch and light are bigger than her <laughs> so she, she's like how is this supposed to help it's just the watch it can't be that important right so like maybe maybe like a, a perception or an insight check or something to see if this is like uh this is when to to try and bring up some com hopefully just conversation about whatever this thing is and whatever they're they're hooked in with because she remembers the the conversation she had with bugbear i think talking about um, how burly, they, yeah. they got roped into something yeah um so, so you see burly um sort of at the um, back after Thacko goes into his own um, uh, wagon, um, he sort of nods for you to kind of go over there. And uh, so um, he, he says, you guys should go um, talk to Mr. Witch and Mr. Light now. You got the watch, right? right? He says. Yeah, yeah, I still got it. I wouldn't give it to anybody else because nobody else could hold on to it. They're all stupid. Yeah. He goes, good, good. You should get your answers now. <laughs> so she starts to like walk over there and then about halfway towards getting to them, she stops. And with like an unusual look on her face, she turns to Carlton and she's like, you're not going to, you're not going to leave me, right? <laughs> nope. <laughs> All right, good, because if you do, I'm going to take your fucking kneecaps. And then she keeps walking <laughs> like she didn't <laughs> show any sort of emotion whatsoever. All I did was laugh at it. <laughs> now your comment. Now we're like the exact same height, too, so she could ex perfectly take your kneecaps. <laughs> take the kneecaps out. Yeah. Okay, so you guys go into... um. Uh, knock on the um, wagon for Mr. Witch and Mr. Light. Um, they, oh, I need this other story element here. Burley's plan. Okay, that's that one. Uh, let's only confront them. Uh, hang on a sec here. Okay, so uh, some of this stuff may be relevant. So, um, Mr. Witch answers the door. He goes, ah, just the people we've been waiting to see. So you have something for me? She's, she's like, uh, kind of like half behind Carlton, just using him as like a mini human shield. <laughs> and she's, she's like, uh, it's not for you. Actually, I think it's for me right now, but we do want to talk. If you got time, that is. He says, yeah, come on. Come on in. She, she makes sure to stay behind Carlton while walking forwards.
Okay. And she kind of, um, kind of like, she stays closer to like a like if there's an open window thing or like just close to the door, just in case something happens that doesn't. You like drag my body over through. there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh so what um uh Mr Mr. Light comes over and says Ah, so um what can we do for you? We're quite eager to get back what has been lost. Um we we know a couple things that are going on, right? We don't know the whole story, but um, my partner, unlike me, doesn't like to generally assume that everyone is a bad person. So we figured you'd tell us your side of the story or whatever you can, and then we'll think about giving you back your little watch thing. Is that cool with you? Yes. Um, there are forces at work here that are not... Um... They're on the other side and uh, not entirely um, within our control. So what would you wish to know? So who are, are you working for somebody? Are you like a, like one of those warlocks or something like that? Somebody rope you into something that wasn't quite as good as you thought it was? We have agreements. We don't technically work for anyone. We have our own interests. We made a deal to um, acquire this carnival in exchange for another one that we had owned. Uh, more of a bet, really. But some additional... Have you heard of the Plane of Shadow? It's not like a lot. We are what is known as Shadowvar, Elves of the Shadow Realm. But that realm, even for Mr. Witch, was quite dull and dreary. And for someone like myself, very restrictive. And we wished to leave that realm, or at least do something with a little bit more style and charm in the world. And we met the owners of this carnival hundreds of years ago. And we made a bet. I won't go into the details, but we won the bet, which allowed us to switch carnivals with them. We had a decent carnival. It was nothing like this but of the type that you would expect from the Shadow Realm. Not very popular there. Obviously, they weren't much interested in mirth or merriment. So it was a very dull affair, and um, we had to cater to our audience in some ways. So some of the attractions were somewhat cruel in nature. Not by my choice, of course, or Mr. Witch's choice. And he nods. And um, if you want to make an insight check to see if this, this story is ringing true, you can. Okay. I will definitely do that. So that's just uh, insight on the uh, um, skills list. Carlton might want to do that, too. I think his, yeah, his Carlton plus is, is I got, well, oh, you did pretty good. Oh, I got a 19. Okay. Let's go. So uh, Carlton's not too sure, but as generally trusting so pretty much believes whatever they're saying <laughs> uh, yeah Cliff's yeah, so more sure suspicious is. his <laughs> narrowed eyes looks at them but they seem to be coming clean pretty well they probably wouldn't have told you this kind of information if it hadn't been true okay um, all right that sounds good and so he says so Needless to say, the the switch was only supposed to be temporary, but we have not crossed paths with the previous owners of this carnival, nor do we wish to. So, the one of the downsides of this carnival was a portal to a realm known as Prismere. 
I believe you may have heard of that. Is it the Mira? This is a, a, a realm of an archfey known as Zibilna. Something seems to have happened in the Prismere, and we have had to make a pre the previous owner of the Prismere was was delightful, a delightful yeah. woman, and uh, she was quite happy to help us increase our audience and uh, gave us various gifts to help uh, increase the happiness of the carnival and uh, was generally a, a, a nice person that we liked dealing with. Whatever has happened in the Prismere now is definitely different. People have been going missing and we had to enter into a fey bargain with whoever it is on the other side. I cannot say their name. But they made a fey bargain with us to keep everything that we have and have our carnival be as it was with one special rule. If someone disobeys our rules that we set forth and agreed upon, then they are outside of the carnival's protection and therefore not our concern. But I am not entirely happy with this deal. So if that no longer had to be the case, I would be quite happy about it. All right. So what does the watch do exactly? In the pocket dimension that this carnival exists in while active, the watch can control the passage of time here. We can increase the speed at which time passes or decrease it. Usually, if people are not having very much fun, we tend to try and speed things along. But if everyone is having fun, sometimes we will extend the amount of time uh, to give people more time to enjoy the rides and all of the events. But time is still limited, and so therefore we need the watch to end the carnival and be able to pack it up for transport to the next location. All right. Um, so let's say we go, we go through that little portal or whatever, and we go take care of your little problem. What's in it for us? <clears throat> well, um, you already have our gratitude uh, for bringing such joy to the carnival, surprisingly, with your other activities, but. Um, <laughs> We appreciate that. Uh, if you deal with the problem on the other side, we would again be very grateful, and you would be welcome to participate in the carnival with a free ticket anytime you wish. Also, perhaps some kind of uh, trinkets that you wish that we we can provide for you that will do things Magical things, potions. Do you have one that can give me money? I mean, we're, we are not really in this for the money. It's more of the joy of doing it. But <laughs> And then Mr. Witch says, I can get you money. <laughs> All right, I like that guy right there. So I'm done talking to you. Get out of the way. About the money. <laughs> Mr. Witch goes, oh, I can't. Oh. I never. <laughs> I never. <laughs> well, whatever. Go talk to that one. He's the happy I like everybody person. I want to talk to this one. He said money, okay? <laughs> All right. Mr. Witch says, All right. What do you need to get this um, done? What's a good price for you? Personally, I don't need a lot of money. I just like to have money. You know what I'm saying? I can get whatever I want, however I want. But it could be a little detrimental to get me out of some situations if things don't go the way I planned. 
Okay, he pulls out a, a, a small um, pouch and um, dumps the contents onto a uh, one of those little uh, velvet, um, I don't know, like display areas. And uh, yeah. it is full of a bunch of sparkling gems. She gets like the like the anime stars in the eyes and yeah. like the little jewel <laughs> bubble on the side of her lip. And she's like, yeah, I think that'll work. I think we can go take care of that problem for you. And um, uh, seeing as you need to watch so much and we worked ourselves out a little fair trade here and everything, I think I can give you back your little watch. And she pulls it out. But then right when he goes to take it, she pulls it back. And she's like, that is, of course, as long as I can find you guys easy to get what I wanted for taking care of the problem. He goes... Uh, we are creatures of um, our word and also in this realm giving a an agreement uh, can be bound by fey magic. So if we agree to this, you and we will all, will be bound on the threat of a curse. All right. Does that mean fill your she... part of the agreement? She holds out the watch, loosely, okay. allowing for him and, to take it. And so he in says in a different this. voice, uh, a voice of like some kind of power, and it says, "The agreement is to return the watch of Mister Witch. Mister Witch will give half of the gems now and half upon completion of the mission in the Prismere." to rid us of these and then he he hesitates for a sec and says the influence of and then he realizes he can't say the next part um and then he says those who have stolen the realm from zabilna <clears throat> and uh yeah, she just leaves it hanging there for him to take in, in complete agreement. Ready to, like, take her half of what's laying out on the table right now. <laughs> okay. And so as you um, uh, take... So do you put the, the um, watch back and take the... He, he splits the gems into half and puts some of the other one half back into the pouch. And then he gestures for you to take the gems. Yeah. She takes them and stuffs them into like her own little pouch. Okay, do you had, give like, any to Mimsy? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't even fight. I don't even fight about it. Just smiles at you and just ignores you. <laughs> okay. Then um so Mimsy doesn't take any any gems then? Nope. Okay. I think so... Mimsy's in like a if the child's happy, I'm happy kind of mood. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The child so what happens is a, a swirling magical effect comes around the gems and spreads from those gems and also around the, the mm. watch. And that magic reaches out to Mr. Witch and Mr. Light and also reaches out from the gems to only Calypso and not Mimsy. <laughs> <laughs> and now you feel suddenly bound to this to this quest. Mimsy could take it or leave it. Because <laughs> I'm not stupid. Don't trust <laughs> Faye. Hey. Look, I may trust other pe people, but I don't trust Faybonds. <laughs> All right, um, so so you are now bound. Um, and then uh, Mr. Witch says, do you wish to leave now? We will take you to um, the portal. I want to go. I want to go talk to Dora Legrand one more time, and then I'll be ready to go. Okay, we will meet you at the Hall of Illusions. All right, we'll be there in twenty-ish minutes or something. I don't know. I don't know how time works. I'm just okay. a kid. In this realm, it's <laughs> kind of relative. So. Okay, so you head Should over to the. Uh, read? 
lost property and uh, Duel Negron is there. She goes up to him and she's like, uh, I just want to let you know that we think we figured out where your kid is, maybe what happened to him, and we're going to go and uh, we're going to bring him back for you. All right, and he starts to, uh, um, his eyes actually tear up and he doesn't even say anything. And he just hugs you with his, he has like six legs and two tentacles. So he hugs you with the, oh. the top two legs, <laughs> the two sets of legs and the tentacles wrap around you. It's all there. And, uh, and he kind of uh, purrs a little bit too. See, she, she like stiffens up like super tight. <laughs> um, because she hasn't really had like comforting physical contact. It's been like you know, like more abusive parental contact. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, but after like a couple minutes, she kind of like moves her arms as as much as she can because she's so small <laughs> to to kind of like at, at least try to emulate the hug back. And um, you can see like her cheeks turn like a a light shade of pink. Cause she's she's a little embarrassed by the show of affection, even though she kind of likes it. <laughs> All right, and it and it stays for a little bit like longer than is comfortable, and then suddenly you both sort of look away and kind of shyly kind of say, "Well, um, <clears throat> oh okay, yes, uh, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes." And he and he just goes, "All right, thank you." Yeah, no problem. Um, I gotta. I'm gonna go over there, and she like runs away. <laughs> and uh, uh, does Mimsy do anything with Dylan Uh, I don't know. Hug the cat. <laughs> I All just right, imagine he, him. He gives you like another this uh, a hug, a similar <laughs> hug. He uh, hugs you in a similar way. Cat in the air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he gives you a similar hug. Uh, and she, she's like absolutely left Vimsy behind. She's just already all the way over there, like <laughs> trying to brush off the, the pink on her cheeks or like wave, wave her hands on her face to make it go away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so you arrive... At the Hall of Illusions, and uh, you work your way through the um, the young age to the old age, and arrive at the um, same mirror as before. Um, as uh, Mister Witch and Mister Light, um, uh, move through the Hall of Illusions. Uh, oh, you don't see this part. They're actually already there. Okay, I guess they meet you outside. Their reflections in the mirror show them as gloomy, Shatterkai children with your own youthful <laughs> reflections falling behind. Uh, soon they call you to a halt, and the mirrors now reflect everyone's true age. Uh, Mr. Witch addresses you in a hushed tone. Everything you seek and more lies beyond this mirror. If you mean to step through, then stand in front of the glass and repeat this rhyme. Hither, thither, here and there. Wander yonder, show me where. She kind of like looks up at Mimsy and like moves up in front of the mirror at the same time so they can say it and then get ready to go through while remembering the, the little pig looking thing that almost sucked her into the mirror against her own will. Okay, so when the two of you stand in front of the mirror, uh, miss swirl in the mirror and blot out your reflection. reflection. Um, and then uh, you're both pulled through the mirror and deposited into a strange realm. Um, and as you leave, you hear the voice, the voices of witch and light, which says, Mind the rule of three, future, present, past. And light says, Find the alicorn, 
free the dormant queen at last. Okay. And uh, those um, lines are present in the fancy grounds there for you. Okay. If you wanted to, <clears throat> you can paste those into the chat too if you want. Okay. Um, I can I do like a like an investigation check or something to kind of just like see if there's anything dangerous nearby immediately? Um, yeah, just let me describe where you're at now. Okay. okay. So, I need to pull up another map here. We're on ch oh, finally on to chapter two. We get a new map. Yep. Okay. Players hither. Okay, which area do you start in? Okay, Broken Bridge. Okay, so uh, when you arrive, you arrive on this bridge. Um, uh, I can't see the map on my own fantasy grounds. Oh, yeah, I got to share that with you. Yes. Okay, let's go to the next thing. Okay, so from this uh, bridge you can see an enormous swamp containing huge <laughs> tangles of mangrove roots, expansions of thick marsh, and mysterious sights half sunk in the muck. Weird haunting creatures call this land home and is dotted with old wells that belch out and slurp up the sludgy water that saturates the land. And you guys know this land as Hither, and you had already learned that Bavlorna Blightstraw was the one whose uh, lair is here. Okay. Uh, okay, and I'll just use... So, I'm just going to close this map. Oh, yeah, I got to do it with my combat tracker.
So this map is approximately, uh, I'm going to reduce the size of this. Um, it's basically one mile per hex. So okay. we'll just use this token to kind of represent the whole party. I wonder if I can shrink it down a bit. That should be good enough. It's just a, a rough marker anyway. All right, so. So as you arrive there, um, you stand at the edge of a raised and broken causeway under a hazy twilight sky. Uh, the causeway, which is built from pale stones that glow faintly from within, towers over the surrounding landscape, but there are large sections that, of it that have crumbled away. As you can see right there. Um, the parts that remain in place are separated by large gaps where portions have collapsed. A fog-shrouded swamp spreads out below you in all directions, and up from its muck wafts the smell of rotting plants. Also rising from the swamps is the music of uh, nature a discordant symphony of croaking frogs and singing birds. <laughs> okay, so this road is approximately 20 feet wide and 100 feet above the swamp. Um... Large, colorful shelf mush mushrooms cling to the lower half of each support pillar. You can see down there. And, um, and then the marshland that is under the pillars is hidden under a 10-foot thick blanket of fog that heavily obscures all creatures inside it. Uh, there are handholds and footholds carved into each pillar that lead down to the mushrooms. Uh, and uh, you should be able to climb down with a pretty easy climb check. Okay. Um. Can I can I still do that investigation check just to see if like there's anything that if we climb down we're gonna like jump into like something dangerous or like a part of the bridge won't like fall I mean, off or something you you can see without a check that um the handholds are pretty um like safe looking um you might want to use a rope okay. or something but you could probably get down pretty easily without falling and um down below you can't really yeah. see anything through the fog so you can't really tell if there's anything down there and uh, if you listen, like try to listen a little bit, you can't really hear anything that helps you other than the sounds of frogs and birds croaking. Or frogs croaking and birds right. singing. Um, I, I don't have a rope in my inventory. Um, if you guys... That's for sure. Uh, since you're looking around, uh, make a perception check. Okay. Oh, nice. 20. That's a good number. Mimsy got a 20? Well, if I could get yeah. the map out the way. Nine, okay. Oh, that's lovely. I got a nine. Um, so Mimsy notices and then points out to Calypso. Uh, that in the distant sky, you spot a great balloon made of patchwork material. Uh, and it's spinning out of control as though uh, it was punctured somehow. Somehow, 
and there's a wicker basket hanging below it that seems to swing wildly. Uh, it quickly plunges out of sight, disappearing into the fog approximately a mile away um, to the right, on, uh, away from the, uh, the bridge. Okay. Then um, I guess we'll go towards that. Okay, so you're going to climb down. See if that's the rope. Yeah. Do I need an acrobatics check or anything? Um, it'll be an athletics check, but if you want to do it with some flair, you could use your acrobatics. <laughs> I think I would rather use my acrobatics with how okay. I've been rolling. Yeah. Oh. You climb down. No that was problem. good. I see All right. You have a dwarf doing acrobatics, to be and honest. You do a little flip at the bottom. <laughs> the dwarf... dwarf just, like, jumps down, like, Hulk style and lands. <laughs> With a plus five on athletics, puts cracks in the ground. <laughs> All right. And sorry, what did uh, Mimsy get? Oh, I didn't even do that. <laughs> okay, you can roll. Oh, you athletics, gotta roll your athletics. Athletics or acrobatics. Okay, I'll do my <laughs> athletics. Okay. I got a 14, better, but because yeah. my plus 5, I have a 19. Yeah, you get down no problem. So now you guys get down to the uh, um, mushroom area, and they're actually pretty solid to walk on now that you get down there. Right. Uh, did, it, did, the, did the balloon land, like, on the side of the, the water... That we won't have to like cross over it. Uh, you think it or was just, on the just, other just... side. Oh, beautiful. Okay, well we'll head towards the balloon then. Still, hit the. Hope we don't have to swim. Okay. Because I feel so... like I feel like I she mean, doesn't know how to swim for your lives. She's gonna like. Ride on Mimsy's back in the water like he's a surfboard. Look, you're gonna get on him, and then you're gonna be the one drowning him. Get me out of here! Get me! You're trying to save yourself, but you're drowning him in the process. She, she weighs like two whole pounds. I think that you're. I feel like you would purposely try to drown him. To be honest, I feel like you purposely try to drown him while you're trying to swim. You like you thought you could get away with winning that snail race. <laughs> I thought you could drown him. Gah. <laughs> See how long you hold your breath, dwarf. I'm sorry, my, my okay. tiefling came Let's over see. me a little bit. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one sec. I'm actually gonna since we actually have a viewer. Um I'm gonna start the uh contest here. Just hold on a sec. Is it fish? He said he was late. I text. I I was like, we're starting stream like an hour and a half ago, and he just texted and was like, "Oh, I'm late." <laughs> so let me just start getting you there. A giveaway. Anymore. Any of my commands work? Hmm. Okay, well, hopefully that works. Um, all right, so uh, you guys are heading towards. The, so now you can see, uh, now that you're down there, you can see this um, slanty tower. And uh, it is um, 
a crumbling stone tower that rises out of the swamp, leaning at such an angle that it threatens to keel over. Black brambles surround the base of the tower and cling to its lower half. Um, hanging from the crenellations on the lower side of the tower's peak is a large woven basket at the end of the of a tangle of ropes um, and tattered fabric. Uh, the basket dangles 30 feet above the surface of the swamp. And that would be the balloon. All right. Um, the gr um. black brambles cover the ground within 30 feet of the tower, clustering in a dense patch around uh, the open doorway. So she looks at the open door and she's like, well, that's not ominous at all. And the Tower of Pisa, but in worse shape. She kind of looks at Mimsy and she's like, so uh, you want to go see what's in there? Sure. Let's go. Come on. Drags you. <laughs> Drags you along. <laughs> she's, she's like, heels in the ground, like, pulling back, like, hold on, wait a minute, why don't I just stand guard at the door, and you go no, inside on. and see what's we going on go, first, so and then go. I'll follow. We're going! We're going! Yay! <laughs> so, um, like, actually, I just wanted to go to the balloon, so... As then we you, can go to the balloon first! As you approach the edge of the bramble patch, you hear a whispered voice say, Psst, you there. I need your help. <laughs> She, and the whisper like, comes from the basket that dangles from the top of the tower. Uh, uh -huh. Do you guys say anything? She like doesn't realize that it's coming from there at first, so she's like almost like a cat when they like arch their back up, just gets up in that position. She's like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> looking around, like, where did that come from? We just got here. Why is it already happening? So, uh, do you say that out loud, or? Yeah, she says it out loud. Okay. He goes, shh, shh. I'm in a bit of a bind, as you can observe. I, Sir Talavar, as one of the Summer Queen's loyal servants, ask that you set me free. You see, I was in the midst of a daring escape from the vile Bav Bavlorna Blightstraw when our balloon was set upon by an ill wind and sent plumbing to its current unfortunate location. My pilot, the Honorable Wigglewog, did not survive, I'm afraid. I believe uh, I've been trapped up here for a while now, and uh, help me, I must tell my queen of the fall of Prismir. She, she hears wiggle wom and gets hung up on that for a second and all she can imagine is like just a giant like caterpillar or something <laughs> with arms <laughs> flying the flying the thing and then she shakes her head and like looks around to see like exactly where the balloon is um so like if it's is it was it just like at the top of the building or is it just close to so the ground it's, or it's it's where did um... it land Balloon has popped kind of on the top of the tower and it's hanging down uh, about 30 feet up from the ground. Okay. Um, can I? That's like a distance that I could climb up, isn't it? Or should I just get Mimsy to throw me? Um, so you're still 30 feet from the tower because the brambles kind of start at the um, 30 feet and kind of cover a 30 foot radius around the tower. Okay. Um. But I do they look like I could get through them with like an acrobatics check, or like they're? Um, or can I see if there's like a pathway or something where they're not so clustered or something? You could probably get through um if you move very slowly, um, so at like half speed. And um, yeah. if you fall, though, you're probably going to get pretty cut up. Okay. Um, so 
we're 30 feet away, but that's just from from the castle, not like from the brambles too. I think I think she's just gonna try to like wiggle through to get up to a like a flat surface past the brambles and then see if she can climb up to the to the balloon. Okay, so you start moving through, and uh, uh, you hear from inside there. I say, what What are you doing now? Please whisper. In, in like the loudest voice possible, she's like, "Why do I need to whisper?" Shh, shh. Two two serpents are asleep in the brambles just outside the tower door. If you waken them, they might put the squeeze on you, or worse, devour me. <laughs> She like pauses in place, making it having made it like past maybe two vines and and backs out. And she's like, "All right, I'm not I'm not going in there. I'm not. <laughs> no, nope, sorry, not Yo, sorry. Yo. <laughs> I say we leave him to die. I no, think we no, should just leave him to die. You. No, he'll probably be fine. It's all right. <laughs> no, let's go. Come on, we got this. Right. Well, how about you go kill the snakes and then I'll come in." to wake them remember sorry what did you say to him she, she was like how about you go kill the snakes and then i'll go through are you saying that to 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 mimsy mimsy okay. yeah <laughs> why did it have to be snakes <laughs> I mean, if they were like little ones, you know, but they're not. <laughs> More like a Naga or Gorgon. Gorgon. Would it be like, is killing them an option? Can we just kill the snakes? I mean, I would, but because like, I don't know anything about them. So, what are you going to do? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I feel like trying to go through with them in there is just a bad idea. Because she's already paranoid. So, like, if she sees the smallest bramble movement, she's going to freak out and then wake the snakes up. Yep. So I feel like Mimsy might be the option to go in here and either kill them or like, or just throw me, just throw me over the brambles. I'll land somewhere, right? <laughs> what, what do you think? Mm. I'm really tempted to throw you, but I also want to fight some snakes. <laughs> what if what if you throw me and then go fight the snakes while I'm trying to get the guy out of the balloon? Well, I can and imagine everybody... that. And like, I'm not even paying attention. I just throw you and you slam right into the tower, like face plant and whole thing. There's like a hole through the um, tower oh, of your like, head body. It's just gone so, instantly. It's a body-shaped hole. And then I'm just racing off to go find those snakes. <laughs> No, I'm paying attention to what happened to you. She just runs into the brambles, screaming to wake them up on purpose to fight them. <laughs> it's like just a barbarian scream. It's like, just, ah, ah. we're coming to fight you. Snakes. <laughs> Goes into a rage. <laughs> I never knew what was coming. <laughs> All right, so I'll let you uh, take the the throw action and uh, throw me. we will make a uh, <laughs> athletics check I guess <laughs> athletics okay should I, you're probably should not I do very like heavy. an acrobatics for the landing or something no she weighs sure, like 2 yeah. pounds she's so small okay my I'll athletics do an acrobatics. check is 16 oh my god 16 I'm gonna shoot myself I got a 7 yeah 16 in total okay. <laughs> I got a 7 so um, she does successfully, or he does successfully throw you uh, about 
10 feet into the brambles. <laughs> <laughs> and on my seven you athletics, I just land on a snake. And uh, <laughs> so your athletics or acrobatics was seven total. So um, you <laughs> go to like, you're expecting to be like thrown really far, but then you realize that probably wasn't physically possible. And, uh, <laughs> Now you're like start swinging, you know how you're like you're you're when you're like jumping and then you realize you're not going as far as you wanted. You start flailing your arms yeah. and then catch yeah. your foot on a on a bramble and go face first into the brambles and take uh, three points of damage from the brambles. <laughs> <laughs> and you are. I don't even prone. think she gets up. I you're prone yeah, at the start just, of the combat. She just stays prone. Just <laughs> okay. Beautiful. And um, I'll allow, if you want, uh, Carlton to use your bonus action to go into rage at this point. Okay. <laughs> rage we go. And uh, you're going to make lots of noise so the snakes come over? Yeah. Please do. Help okay. me. I am a rogue. I cannot get hit. All right. Uh, so some snakes are appearing. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna roll for you guys. Um, I'll I'll do the the um, initiative rolls. Just uh, not from that. Uh, from here, so that I just get it for everybody. Um, roll all initiatives. Oh, it's raining. Huh, so it just worked out to that order. Okay, so actually the um so you haven't seen the snakes yet. You assume they're out there. Uh so Calypso, you actually get a turn to act first. <laughs> so it costs half your movement um, to stand up. And you're moving at half movement through the okay. brambles, so but you are a rogue, so you can bonus action dash. Okay. That only gives me like 30 feet total, doesn't it? Yeah, so you have 30 feet total. It's halved by just standing up, so you're 15. And then you're moving at half rate through the through the difficult terrain. So you're, you can basically <laughs> step five feet. <laughs> and then if you want to dash, you can dash another 15 feet and get to through the the brambles. Okay. Um, I I think I'll just go ahead and make those movements to get up top or get at least get out of the brambles to where I can yeah. so hopefully with, next turn climb up. With your movement standing up and using a bonus action to dash, you can get through the brambles to the other side. And now you're at the tower. Uh you still have your action left, which you could use okay. to move more or you could use it to um uh ready an attack. Um, um, if I move, does that get me like up on top of the tower or that just gets you to the base of the tower? Okay. Um, I think I'll go ahead and ready an attack instead, then just in case. Okay, so you're um, basically holding your attack, and if anything comes near you, you're gonna attack it. Yeah, I'm gonna smack it. Okay. So sure enough, out from the uh, brambles, uh, <laughs> seeing all your rushed movement through the brambles, a snake <laughs> races after you. And it is its turn now. So, or it would be its turn, but you actually see it coming and are ready for it, and you get to attack first. Yay! <clears throat> okay. Um, what does an attack roll? Just just roll a d20? Or... Uh, so if you're in Fantasy Grounds, you should be able to um, go to the Actions tab on the right and then pick okay. your weapon. And then you can just drag the dice from whatever weapon you use over to the um, gray box over here. Okay. Um... So like here... And then you can, if you're going to use I'll a dagger, you can drag that over. Or I think I'll do short the sword. short 
I'm thinking short bow, maybe. Okay, shoot it as so it arrives. So I can just get it from a distance, yeah. Oh, not Nat 20. 20! Nice. Okay, so roll your pierce. Just drag the piercing damage over there from the short bow, and then, yeah, it should do that. So 14, 14 damage. Wow, not bad. Oh, yeah, and in the future, you can drag it right onto the to the creature in the combat tracker here. So, okay. And then it will apply, but I'll just add it in there. So... Okay. Uh, he's taking 14 wounds. I think on your screen, you can see... I mean, you're going to oh, see all I their see. stats here anyway on my screen, so it doesn't is... matter. So yeah. these guys are pretty thick snakes here. Let's see if we get a picture. Pretty Chonga snakes. Oh my god. This is like a um like you know how an anaconda looks? This is like a giant oh. anaconda. So it's like no, why though? <laughs> it's it's like <laughs> a regular gonna... anaconda and then giant sized one. <laughs> Not why? Gonna... It's a, a huge beast. So the size categories are you guys are medium, then there's large, then there's huge. So it's two size sizes bigger than you. It's like a Naga. <clears throat> Even worse. Okay, and so this thing is going to try and get you with a bite attack. And a nat one. <laughs> oh, nat one! Yes! <laughs> okay, so the snake was so eager to get you, uh, it... Um, kind of lunged at you and ended up hitting itself on the uh on the uh, head against the uh, wall of the tower and so its next attack will be at disadvantage nice and how does it fight it just gets one melee attack if it if it hits then it can grapple okay all right and then snake number two is going over towards uh mimsy and it will try to attack and it misses it lunges at mimsy but it looks like it just woke up from a long nap so it's a little groggy been too under been too long under its heat lamp <laughs> <laughs> honestly though okay so bro is snoozing susan so what does uh mimsy want to do here you're, you're already rage so so it was like all the other side of the bravel going kill it get it get it kill so it. while you're raging um you have advantage on strength checks uh, when you make a melee weapon attack using strength, you gain a bonus to the damage roll equal to your rage damage, which is, I think at this point is plus two. And you're also resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. And uh, lasts for ten rounds. <clears throat> so nice. Probably the whole combat. And Pretty another thing it. you can do is a reckless attack um, as your attack which will give you advantage on your melee attack, but also grant advantage to someone attacking you. So advantage means you get to roll two dice and pick the best one. <laughs> do you want to, do you want to recklessly attack it? Oh, uh, no, no. Okay. Then, um, do you want to use, uh, are you a two weapon fighter or a single weapon fighter? How do you, um, how do you fight? I use a single weapon. And do you use a shield? No. Where is your, so you have battle axe. You can use a shield. Oh, I do. Oh, you have the sh the unarmored defense. While you're not wearing the armor, you get dex plus con modifier. You can still use a shield and gain that benefit. And 
Although you have a breastplate, so... Would you normally wear that or not? The breastplate? Yeah, what is breastplate? Sure. Armor class. That'll give you AC base of fifth or 14. Uh, whereas you have a con and dex of... So actually, if you wear no armor, you're... You're going to have a 15 armor class, plus you could add a shield. Or if you wear the breastplate, then you would just have, yeah, 16. Leave the breastplate on. Okay, so using breastplate, no shield. So technically, you could <laughs> attack with two weapons if you want. Two okay. si single-handed weapons. Two single-handed uh, weapons, so yeah, like one of them would have to be the light. axes or something. I think that's what it was. I think one battle axe. So one of them has to be light. Mm. I believe. Yeah, one battle axe is your main, and then hand axe is that light? Yeah, hand axe is light, so you can have two axes. And for the second attack, you you don't get to add your uh, damage bonuses. Unless mm. you have special two weapon fighting. I do have two weapon fighting things. Um No, I think that's a the I'm talking about the feet. Yeah, I know. So I think uh anybody can use two weapon fighting, but they don't get the bonus damage to the second attack unless they have that feat. <clears throat> Okay, so yeah, so you can uh, do your first attack. So drag the, um, you want me to just drag this over for you? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so the first attack misses. Um, I think for the snake is armor class is 12. So yeah. Um, and then the hand axe attack. natural one okay so you were seeing this snake come up to you really fast and it's huge and uh tries to attack you and misses uh you swing out with your battle axe um and then you go to attack with your hand axe and uh you're kind of a little bit nervous and your hand axe slips out of your hand as you try to attack with it luckily you have a second one so or is that a second one, or is that just a different way of attacking? Oh, yeah, you have one hand axe. You also have a light hammer, so you could pull that out, or you could try and pick up the hand axe. Um, so this is your turn, so you've basically, that was your attack and your bonus action. So mm -hmm. you could move if you want, but if you try to move away from the snake, it'll get to attack you. I don't think I'm going to move. Okay, so then that would be your turn. And back up to Calypso. Okay. Um, is the other snake like? Is he is he like facing away from me right now? Because he he missed me and hit the wall, or is he just can he uh, see me? He's sort of shaking his head, kind of stunned a little bit. So, um, okay. he will have just disadvantage on his next attack at you. Okay. Um, you guys are pretty uh, fairly does... separate apart because um, Mimsy is still in the. Bramble field. Okay. So he's about uh, can I, 20 feet away from you. Can I do like a sneak attack and then a regular attack? Um, You need someone. Uh, I, if he has. Actually, I'll tell you what. I'll give you advantage instead of him having disadvantage. So you okay. can have advantage, which will give you your sneak attack. So roll. Okay. Um, uh, Little checkbox down here um, where it says ADV. Just check that box. It's just to the left of the dice. Okay. Check that before you attack, and then it'll it will do the advantage for you. I see. Okay. So is it the same thing? Just roll with whatever weapon. Yeah, uh, probably your short sword. So drag over the the plus five thing over there. Okay. And a 16, 16 will hit. Nice. So now you roll your... Um, uh, if you put on... 
So I think if you go uh, drag the, uh, if you go down to where it says sneak attack, mm -hmm. and if you drag that um, effect onto yourself in the combat tracker, then it will give you your sneak attack on your next roll, and then you just drag the uh, the 1d6 plus 3 piercing over to the uh, snake number 1. It should automatically do it. Okay, so I clicked the little star because it wouldn't let me drag. Okay, that should work. But it said use power, and then um, you said roll it on snake 1. Oh, uh, I did the sneak attack now, so you have it. You just have to click on the little person icon. Okay, so now it's on for you. So now just drag the 1d6 piercing over onto snake number one. Double six is wow. You're getting some yeah. good rolls on that. Rolls. Max sneak attack damage. Okay, 15 onto that snake. He is halfway already. I'm a beast. And then I can do a regular attack, right? Um, that right. was your regular attack, so oh, you okay. still have a bonus action if you have something you can do. Okay. Can I use the bonus action to attack again? Uh, are you... I guess you have nothing in your other hand, right? So you could use it... You could attack with a dagger as well. Okay. Um, I'll do that, then. So yeah, take one of your daggers and drag it over. No, oh, and this, this would be an advantage again as well, so roll again. Oh, okay. There you go. 20. Not okay. that. And then just um uh roll the da or drag the damage over onto the snake. I'll have to take off three because it won't have the piercing. Or it won't Seven. have the extra three. So okay. And uh, that is your turn. Okay, so Snake shakes off his confusion. Uh, so since you got the advantage for that, and it will now attack you. <laughs> Snake misses. Urgh. Yeah. Still a little bit confused. And the other snake attacking Mimsy. And that will actually hit. And so Carlton will take six, ten damage. Pretty nasty damage on this thing. And then uh, it gets a chance to grapple, I think. And the creature is restrained. Okay, it just automatically grapples you then. Okay, so the snake hits you and wraps its uh, uh, body around you, and now you cannot move, but you can still... Um, what does restrained mean? Okay, so uh, you are being restrained by that creature. So I think that just means you can't move. All right, but you can still attack it. So you can do the same thing you did before. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I will do Lex attack for you. Two. Oh, dude, both miss. Roll oh, it's giving me. It's disadvantage. I guess restrained is giving you disadvantage as well. Okay, and then the hand axe. Or no, you drop the hand axe. So I guess you pull out the light hammer because you can't bend down now. So we'll try that. And even though the low 
lowest is is the um, uh, 13. It's still going to hit with the plus 2. So you hit with the hammer. Uh, that's just going to be a D4 damage. And it is a 4. Oh, minus, it won't have the plus three. Oh, but it will have a plus two because of your rage. I believe rage applies to all attack. Melee weapon attack straight. And a bonus to that equals, okay, yeah. So you would get that still. Oh, and you are resistant to his piercing attack. So actually you only would have taken five damage. All right, so that should... so that means I would have twenty health at least. Yep. Okay, and then it is uh, Mimsy's turn. Um, you do get uh, disadvantage on your rolls while restrained, so you can try to break free from the grapple, but that'll be your action. Um, but it will be a strength check, which, which you will get advantage on. So that will cancel out the disadvantage, and you'll just be a straight roll with your strength to beat DC 16. Yeah, if I can break free, I'll try that. Okay, actually, I think breaking free is a is a uh, athletics check, so you can use that stat for mm. So I'll just roll it over here. So 15, what did I say it had to be 16? Oh, it's so close. Uh, DC 16, yes, to get away. Okay, so um, I'll let you take um, your bonus action, though. Or Wait, did you already roll? You already attacked this round anyway, so you can't break free as well. Yeah, so that would be your turn. Okay, Calypso. Um, I'm going to, I'm just going to go ahead and attack this thing again. With my short sword, I think. Okay. Sword. Uh, this time oh, there's no. Not one. This time there's no advantage, so um, that will be a miss, and I'm gonna have you uh, um. Let's see. I will give um. I'll either, I'll let you either drop your your sword or. You can fall down, and the um, snake will get advantage on you. I'll drop my sword. Okay, so you you lose your grip on your sword, um, and then you still have your dagger you can attack with as well. I'm gonna try to to attack it with my dagger again. Okay, and that is 16? gonna hit, and then it's just gonna be okay. a regular D4. And uh, no sneak attack this time because he's uh, not flanked with anything. seven. So it's going to be not the plus three though. So it'll just be a four. Okay. So we'll give him three back. All right, and then uh, the snake will attack you again. Nope. It cannot get you. <laughs> Tries I'm again too small. and misses. <laughs> he was not used to fighting someone so tiny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then now the um, uh, snake is going to try and constrict you. Uh, and uh, what is Grim? Your armor class was 16, so he made it 
Uh, so he's going to do 2d8 plus 4 bludgeoning damage. It's to bludgeoning. So normally that would be 12 damage, but it's going to be halved. So uh, 6 and 5 was 11. And, uh, um, yeah, it's still grappling, so it, that's all it can do. And then do you want to try and break free again or just attack with your, with your battle axe? Uh, uh, we'll attack. Who cares? I can die from a snake. Okay. <laughs> attack from a snake. Calypso <laughs> screaming from across the field like you fucking is Okay, so with disadvantage it's gonna be thirteen. I think the snake's armor class was Oh, only twelve, so that hits. Nice. Alright, and what date What did you hit with before? Yeah. I think I didn't, uh, oh no, the hammer did hit. Oh yeah, yeah, it was, I was right. Okay. Okay, so, um, that hits, so the damage will be 1d8 plus 5 slashing. I think it's got the rage clicked in, so that's actually going to be 10 damage to it. Uh, let me just see if I can give you a rage effect to you. There we go. Uh, except it shouldn't be four. It should be two. Okay, I've got two of them on there. Okay, so, uh, and then the second attack with the light hammer is, why is this one lower? Hmm? Oh, this one has a lower to hit value, it shouldn't be. The light hammer? It's five. It should be strength based. Nope. Still like that. There we go. That one should also be in the way. Okay, so that should be a better chance to hit. Oh, but with disadvantage, it's a two. So that will miss. E All right, and Calypso? Um. Same thing. Yeah. Uh, so if I you're not constricted, so you can... You can spend your bonus action to gra to pick up your short sword. Okay. Um, or I'll let you make an acrobatics roll to do it without losing your bonus action. Do a little roll. Okay. Uh, you yeah. DC, Get fancy over here. DC 15 acrobatics. Come on. Don't be mean. Natural 20. <laughs> okay. You do a little <laughs> flip and flip your sword into the air, catch it, and then stab down at the uh, at the snake from the air okay so roll an attack first yeah roll attack with uh and then... i'll give you advantage on this too so since you rolled so cool on your acrobatics yes you surprise the snake. 17 and a nat one so i think we'll take the 17, 17 sounds like a good choice <laughs> and then All drag right. the uh turn on the um advantage and then drag on your your damage because you 
first thing could happen. Okay, so four. And then roll another d6. Oh. Oh. Nine. Okay, so, but without the plus three. I think so. I missed him. Okay, so that'll be six. Did you drag that first one onto the snake or not? I did. I got the four onto him, but I missed him with the nine. Okay, so that should actually be six more, so. Getting pretty weak, that snake. And then uh, stab him with the dagger. Yeah. I'll do that. Yeah, my advantage. <laughs> okay, and uh, next is that snake. Will it actually hit you at least once before it dies? Please don't. Please don't. I'm nope, just a baby. Not this time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that snake is getting pretty frustrated. What's up, that snake? Bro needs glasses. <laughs> okay, another constrict on the Carlton. And actually, it fails to constrict you this time. And do you want to just throw your battle axe attack at him? I'll free myself this time. Okay. I'll at least try to. <laughs> here, I'll roll it here. Uh, athletics. Uh, 50. You break free. All right, and I'll let you do your bonus action with your battle axe. So we'll just pull that up here and get that snake with the battle axe. Oh, yeah, you're not restrained anymore, so I'll just take uh, either one of them would have been a hit. So let's just get that restrained. And then we're going to go the slashing damage. Oh, one. But plus five, so that makes it a six. Snake is starting to get hurt. And now you are free, so you may attack next time from anywhere. Oh, and uh, I'll I'll say you can also uh, move over to where you dropped your hand axe, and next turn you can use a bonus action to pick it up. Okay. Calypso. Um, I'm gonna swing at it with my short sword again. Okay. Oh. On a nat one. <laughs> All right. Oh so my gosh. That is gonna be drop the sword or t or give the snake advantage. Drop the sword. Okay. Uh, you did so well with it last time. Maybe that's just your way to do I, things now. Yeah. I'm going to drop it and make it look like it was an accident, but that was like the whole plan the whole time. It's a feint. I was like, I, <laughs> yeah. I'm just pretending that I'm bad, but I'm actually doing better than, than the barbarian. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And you can still uh, right. bonus action with your dagger. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do that. 20, 30, 20. Oh, you, okay. And you uh, hear from above, I say, what, what is going on down there? What are you about this? <laughs> She's just like, shut up, and then goes to swing. <laughs> okay, so damage will missing? be... Oh, so, not good. So, um, since you didn't get an actual, well, no, yeah, you did get attacked and you just dropped your sword. So that'll just be with no bonus. So that'll be one. <laughs> uh, so I'll give him back three hit points. Okay. He's getting close. One good round and you can finish him off. Please. I need to do another acrobatics check. <laughs> and he Finally hits you, I believe. Oh my god, how dare you. What is your AC? 14. So 14. So yeah, you might... How do you get 
Oh, because leather armor and dexterity bonus. Okay. You may want to start using a shield. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Okay, so he is going to do ooh, 15 points of damage. And he's got you constricted. 15 health. Oh, <laughs> my. I did how much damage? You both kill him next Excuse round. Me. Excuse me. Oh, maybe he has to hit on the constrict to get the. I'm just a baby. Wait, does it say constrict target is grappled? I'm just a hmm. baby. Okay, I guess you're just technically grappled. Uh, maybe it hits with the one attack and that gives it the other attack. I'm not sure how that works. I'll just keep doing it the way I have been. All right, so next uh, is the other snake. Oh, he's going to hit as well. So he's going to take four damage total. And now you're also grappled. So I think what I'll do is is when it first hits you, it'll grapple you, and then the next hit with the constrict will restrain you. How about? So let's just change that on yours too. Okay, and then Carlton, you are grappled now. So you can spend an action to break free, or you can just attack it again. Attack. Attack. Okay, let's do that. So you don't have to worry about um, disadvantage right now until he constricts you. Okay, so yeah. 12 will actually hit. So That is 8 plus 5, 13. Mm. So that's going to be 32. All right. And then uh, with the... Did you want to spend your bonus action grabbing your hand axe back? Or do you want to just hit with the light hammer? With the light hammer. Okay. It does about the same. All right. That'll hit. And that'll be four minus one. So you get one back. Okay. And mm -hmm. next is Calypso. Can you do this okay. before you pass out? <laughs> <laughs> I have two whole hit points left. Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, uh, can I... Can I do it with like an acrobatics check to try and get out and then also grab my short sword and do another really cool attack? Uh, you can do an acrobatics check to get you out. You could do a bonus action to do an acrobatics check to get your weapon, but you won't be able to attack with okay. it. Although I will allow it if you roll a natural 20 on either of those. <laughs> yes. Okay, so... 14. You don't even escape. <laughs> Oh no. And um, so therefore the other part is negated. So you can just attack with your with your dagger. Okay. Oh man. Please. Be nice to me. 
14. That will hit. Okay. Be nice to me. Five. Two. So it's just going to be a two. Let's see. 15. Oh, I hope this snake doesn't hit you. Oh my god, I'm going to die. I'm about to be on death saving throws. Yep. Oh no. And we don't even have a healer. You, yeah, I know. You go unconscious. Oh, I, I just I realized. I just realized last. what you could have done. <laughs> what could I have done? You remember you have those wings. <laughs> You're still within the hour. Oh, no. You could have flown I over forgot. the brambles, and you could have flown above. I the forgot snake. about the wings. <laughs> <laughs> could have been shooting it from above. Um. Yeah, so anyway, you're unconscious because you forgot about your wings. <laughs> it's going to eat me. Uh, well, that's what it'll do next time. I don't think it should eat me. I'm just a light appetizer. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> okay, so now Carlton's going to constrict. 14 is going to... Oh, with a bonus, is going to hit... So then it will be Hi. and so he takes partial damage there and it's effectively restrained. Don't worry, I'll pass that with you soon. <laughs> <laughs> We're both just gonna die. Party's over. Well the only thing would be Carlton... welcome us. Might have a chance if he can hit with some of these. Oh, yeah. Okay, so let's see. You can do it, Carlton. I believe in you. <laughs> All right. Uh, actions. Alack. Oh, it's at disadvantage now, so that is going to miss. And Barshi, did you want to try to break free, or just a, was it going to be an attack? Okay, even if I try to break free, there's still two snakes left. Yeah, well, one's going to eat me, so, so just throw even a hand if dice at it. One missed. There's still a chance the other one's definitely not gonna miss. Well, you do have advantage on strength checks, so you, breaking free might be worth it to just run over and try to kill the other snake. True, I could do that. And then just it, break free and throw the hand axe at it. It'll be fine. Uh, you need to do ten damage, so it's probably gonna need more than just a hand axe. Huh? All right. Yeah. So let's say let's say um. Uh, we're doing great guys we'll take the first roll and say that you did break free uh, so then you're not restrained here and here and then I will let you take the um, uh, the the your attack on the other so you can move away this snake's going to get an opportunity attack yeah but hopefully it won't hit Oh, it did hit. Okay, so it needs to roll less than eight damage. <laughs> oh, it rolled max damage. I <laughs> whacked you down. All right, so you tried to get away to go help your friend, and you went down. You guys are both unconscious. And, oh, hooray. Uh, I will let you know that you are not dead, but you will see what happens next time. Oh, no. 
You will not be dead. You don't need to make up a new character, but I will let you know what happens next time. It's a cliffhanger ending. That is right. so rude. <laughs> We're on death that. saving throws and we have no cleric. Oh my god. <laughs> We lost I'm taking a sub we got looted, guys. <laughs> My next level is going to a subclass. That's what's gonna happen. <laughs> well, actually, would, do we even level you guys up? What level are you at? We we're still at level two, and we've had a few sessions, so I have no idea. Yeah, rogue two. You are probably after this one. There hasn't been a lot of like things like fighting or, or overcoming things but um yeah uh i will if you survive this uh next time then maybe we'll level you up <laughs> i'll start keeping track of xp because i haven't really been doing that uh but yeah, or it but could like just go by milestone so i'm gonna get all my worst throws on the next the next session i'm just gonna die or it could be one of those cases where you you know you're down and then but you just earned an ex enough XP at the end of the session that you uh, level up and suddenly you pop up. Yes. <laughs> She's like in, in her mid-death experience. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Just like so determined, she just comes back to life. <laughs> All right. So sorry to end on a little bit of a down note there, but... Uh... Uh... Everything up till now has been pretty uh pretty upbeat, so gotta have those those downbeats once in a while. I mean, I don't know. We almost got depressing with Thurlegron talking about his kid. Yeah, that was a bit of a downbeat. So if so <laughs> like kinda wanted to cry but wasn't going to. <laughs> I'm not crying, you're crying. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> All right, well, tune in next week yeah. and see... Or are we going to play next week, I assume? But yeah, it should be good next week. Okay. And Find out what happens to our intrepid heroes. One other thing I should probably do is uh, lower the difficulty of these encounters since there's only two of you now. <laughs> it's okay, I'm going to take a subclass. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'll... I'll uh, uh, well, what all can heal other than a cleric? Um, you can get like healing potions and stuff like that, so I may right. give something in, in that area. Um, yeah. also, druids can yeah. heal. Um, bards, Ooh, that would be cool. Bards, either have like a bard or druid, but I haven't messed with a druid yet, so I might want to like take that subclass because that would be interesting. Yeah, I mean, it would make sense a little bit for your character. Yeah, she does like animals, so. Yeah. Soft spot for animals, so. Take home yeah. Good. Although, um, taking any spellcaster with any non-spellcaster is just, you're just going to be less effective later on as is than if you just took spellcaster. Um, yeah. One thing you could do at level four is take um, magic adept, where you get like a couple cantrips and a and a first level spell. It's not yeah. much, but it gives you some extra things, and then you could take one of them being healing. Okay. That but, sounds uh, cool. Yeah. So I will, um, but that's two levels from now, not next level. So you probably need it fairly soon. I'll make something <laughs> um, happen for next game where you have an NPC that can help you with that kind of thing. Yeah. That'd be cool. <laughs> Basically, the guy that's trapped in the balloon could probably be uh, a helper of some kind. So she's going to be like, can we keep him as a pet? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I promise I'll feed him. <laughs> What's your animal handling at? Then I'll, I'll trust you. I'll... I am pretty sure that I have a plus two. Thank you very much. Okay, then I'll trust you enough. <laughs> it might be a plus one, but there's a plus something on it. I know that much. <laughs> it's like it's a full full grown human and we're like, can I keep it as a pet? What's your animal handling? It's like I, I am a 
Talking human. What are you talking about grown human. right now? You cannot have me as a pet. Yes. <laughs> She's like, hush, pet. What's your name? His name is Gregory. Hush, Gregory. <laughs> Hush, but, Gregory. But, but my name is Tolliver. <laughs> Gregory? Hush, Gregory. I'm going to call you Gregory. <laughs> but that's not my name. Well, too bad. It Hush, Gregory. Bad. You don't get to You're say You're my anything. pet. I get to name you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Well, it was fun. Uh, I finally got out of the carnival. So um, yes, we'll continue on with this swamp adventure. <laughs> next time it's getting exciting we're both dead living the good life right now <laughs> first first real straight. combat and you got wasted <laughs> no, both of us no armor no clothes actually no, i was wasting that snake and then he just decided to actually have glasses on or something for the yeah. last hit there he only got you one time and that's all it needed <laughs> yeah, you have pretty I'm low, a rogue. low hit points for... i cannot get hit I'm just a baby. <laughs> <laughs> There's something about avoiding damages for rogue, or that's not till later. Yeah, second level yeah. rogue still hasn't got a lot. I'm just a baby. <laughs> yeah, a baby that's oh, about oh, to die. Oh, oh, one thing uh, I we didn't do. Uh, not that. But you have hellish rebuke. So when he attacks you and hits, he takes damage. Ooh. So the snake might actually be dead. Let's see what that Ooh. does. And I might not be dead. And the hellish oh, sorry, it's hellish resistance. So you're just resistance to fire. Oh yeah, I'm hellish rebuke is a is a warlock <laughs> ability. Ah, too bad. What does infernal legacy do? Oh, you know thaumaturgy. Okay. Huh. What does thaumaturgy do? Could you have used that? It's like, the, yeah. isn't it like um, where you can make it seem like something like an earthquake is happening? Because that's what they did in Dimension Twenty. Um, Fig used it to like make a. Uh, make it seem like an earthquake was happening to distract people in a cafeteria. You manifest a minor wonder, a sign of supernatural power within range. Your voice booms up to three times as loud, cause flames to fick flicker, harmless tremors in the ground for one minute. Uh, yeah, I suppose you could use it for distraction. It costs a whole action, though, so that would be yeah. one less attack. Yeah, might not really be worth it. I would use it more like in a in a scene if we had to sneak into some place or something, probably. Yeah, distraction. So I'm gonna go. Dancing one. Okay. All right. um, I'll yeah. see you later. That's it for Bye. the game. Thank you for for being yeah. here, and we'll see you next week. Okay. Bye. Night. Bye. Good night. 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 All right. I'm just gonna end the stream Bye. here, and then I'll uh, you can chat a little more if you want. Okay. All right. Thanks for watching, uh, Fish and. We'll see you maybe online in a bit here.